Hello everyone, Matt from Model Minutes here and welcome back to the workbench. Today it's time for another unboxing. So what am I looking at this week? It's this, the Airfix 172nd scale AWC Hawk. That stands for Armstrong Whitworth. This kit was given to me by a friend um, and if you want to know a little bit more about the history of it and how I came to have it, check out my stash video. But today, in this one, I'm going to be looking inside the box, seeing what's included, and if this kit is going to be any good. So join me as I take a look inside the box of this 172nd Airfix Seahawk. Cool, so looking at the front of this, we have got the rather familiar red starter set boxing. Up the top here, we've got four acrylic paints, a tube of poly cement and a brush, which is a size two. Now, I know you're thinking that this probably looks like quite an old kit, and that's because it is an old kit. This was given to me free by a friend who wasn't going to build it. It's still sealed, it hasn't been opened. But looking online, it seems that the last time this particular boxing existed was back in 2010. So anything that's in here is already 10 years old. That means that these glues and paints, well, the glue will probably be fine, but the paints might have dried out, but we'll have a look as we go through. I quite like this image on the front though. It's a rather attractive uh, drawing of the aircraft landing on a aircraft carrier. And then if we flip over to the back, we've got our painting and decal placement instructions. It tells us down here that this is a Hawker Seahawk of 806 Naval Air Squadron uh, in 1959, 1960. We've got some uh, safety information down the bottom here, and we've got an item code, which is A50083. The small edge of the box here has some safety information and the edges just features the same image as on the front. We do have a little bit more information here and it's got a actual size drawing of the, uh, the model with some dimensions. There's 34 pieces, that's how big it is. We've got a flying hour here, cut that out and keep it. And it's a skill level one, so Airfix seem to think this is going to be an easy kit to do. I think it's probably time to get inside the box though and see what we've got. So this, this uh, kit has never been opened, this is the first time, and I don't like these boxes because they glue down the cardboard on the edges rather than having a bit of tape to hold it together. So it, it, you do run the risk of damaging the box, sadly. So that's everything from inside the box, and I'll also take these off now whilst I'm here. The newer designs of the starter sets are much easier to get into. There we go, and a paintbrush, here it comes. Let's take a look at these uh, extra bits. So poly cement, yep, that's fine. It is the normal poly cement, and that's still good. That's still in there, yep, that's still runny. A size two brush there, and the brushes from Humbrol tend to be quite good. Um, they don't seem to have changed at all in the last 10 years and some pots of paint. So 123, 85, 56, and 130. And those are the ones which are indicated on the bottom of the box here. So all the colors that supposedly you need are included. But are they any good? You can see that one's still got, that one's still a bit wet. Sort of dried out on the top. I mean, 10 years has not been kind to it. I reckon I might be able to revive that one. Not a problem though, because I've definitely got spares. 130. That one's still got life in it. Uh, 85. That one's still got life in it. That one's good. And then 123. That's the main overall color. Let's see. Yep, that's good. So they will be usable, I think, even after all these, these years. I'm sure that when I come to do this one, I'll, I'll use a few extra paints as well. Next, let's take a look at the instructions. This is the typical format from Airfix, an A4 booklet. At the top here, we've got some information on the history of the Seahawk. Turn over the page, we've got some 
hints and tips. It's a slightly older format, I mean, being 10 years old, they've changed the uh, sort of font and things since then. We've got a key to the symbols that you'll encounter, and then turning over the page, we actually start our exploded diagrams for the steps. Pile it onto the seat, it looks fairly simple. Don't glue in the arrestor hook. Add some weight to the nose. Tail plane goes together. Wings come in a number of parts. Cockpit canopy goes on. Uh, the ordnance underneath gets added here. And landing gear. So yeah, not many steps there, six, that's it. So we've got some safety information on the back as well. Not many steps, not many parts. Fairly simple by the looks of it. The drawings to me look to be quite old and we'll discover how old this kit actually is shortly. Something else that was included was a Airfix Club pamphlet. Join now for only 15 pounds per year. You get an exclusive kit, uh, club badge, flying hours passport. This is this is the old kit, the old club, this. Um, this doesn't exist anymore. The new club is um, available online and it costs considerably more than this if you want to get the kit version. Um, but as of this year, supposedly Airfix are looking at re-adjusting their club anyway. So sort of a little bit of history of Airfix there. Maybe I should send that back to them and they can frame it or something. Transfers, decals, decals, decals. There we go. We've got a nice little sheet there. They're all numbered. They look okay. They don't seem to be quite up to the standard of the uh, the cartograph stuff we have today, but they're not far off. I mean, being 10 years in a box probably hasn't helped. They look all right. I didn't notice a um, cartograph logo on the box, so these might not be made by cartograph but they don't look too bad. We've still got separate red circles to go inside the roundels, which is a little bit annoying because it's about getting them accurately placed. And the registry of the rest of the printing looks okay. I mean, this A up here looks like it might be off to the left slightly. It could do going back to the right, but there's nothing I can do about that. But yeah, it looks okay. The, the printing's all right. The colours are okay and the film looks to be quite thin so hopefully I shouldn't have any issues putting these onto the model. So finally time to look at the plastic parts. Contained within this plastic bag are all of the main parts including in a second plastic bag the clear parts or clear part I should say there's only one. It isn't, it's not on a sprue or anything it's just a loose clear part. So let's look at this one first, shall we? Yep, so there's your canopy. Um, I have a little bit of dirt on it, but it's okay. There's a little bit of flash around the edges. Nothing really in the way of any canopy frames. Um, so I'd have to mask them manually. It's just basically a molded, uh, a molded shape. Nice and clear though, but yeah, not detailed. This piece has come off the sprue, so that looks like a landing gear cover to me. Bit of flash on that. And then we've got the rest of the plastic parts. What have we got? So we've got one sprue, two, three sprues, and then that one random bit that's fallen off there. It's come from over here. The plastic is, it feels quite brittle actually. It's quite hard, but it feels brittle and it's very smooth and shiny. There doesn't feel like there's much mold release on this, if any at all. It doesn't, it doesn't feel like they've used any. So you don't really need to wash this one, if I'm honest, before you start building. So what have we got? We've got a fuselage half and some of the wing elements. There is a bit of flash and the details are all raised and fairly simple. It's quite a crude looking model. And you can see here the numbers are all on the actual parts and not on the sprue themselves. And we've got some uh, ejector pin marks here as well, which on the outside of these parts are going to need a bit of cleaning up. Let's take a look at the other one. So this is the same sort of deal, the other fuselage half. And again, it's exactly the same as the other one. A Little bit of flash, a little bit of cleaning up needed. Very simple, very simple details. And then we've got the rest of the parts here. Uh, underslung ordnance, tailplane, 
pilot's seat, landing gear covers, bombs, landing gear, very simple. Pilot looks okay, actually. I've seen um, some pilots worse than that. But generally speaking, this is a simple kit with some uh, flash and ejector pin marks, which is going to need cleaning up. The mold quality is generally okay. I have seen worse, I have seen better, but it's, it's not too bad. But you're probably thinking to yourself, why does it look like this? Why does it not look up to the standard of Airfits kits from uh, you know the last 10 years? Bearing in mind this product was on the market in 2010. And there's a perfectly good reason for that. This kit dates from 1957. The tooling for this model kit was made back in 1957 and that's when the first version of this kit was released. It's been released a number of times since then, 1959, 1962, all the way through the 70s, all the way through the 80s and 90s, and then the last time we saw this kit was in this box in 2010. This is not one of Airfix's recent toolings. This is possibly one of their oldest toolings. I would not be surprised if Airfix decided in a few years or so to release this particular kit as part of the Vintage Classic range, the range where they release all of their old tools. And to be brutally honest, a, a kit from 1957 isn't going to have the amazing detail that we have today. And I think that's quite evident in what we've just seen. It's got a low part count and it's got very crude details. Hopefully it fits together all right. The decals are more modern and the paints still seem to be okay, but hopefully this one should work as a, as a simple standalone weekend project. It shouldn't provide you with too many troubles. I'm actually thinking of doing this one exactly as a starter set and I'm gonna brush paint it. So if that's something you'd like to see, let me know down in the comments. But if this kit was last seen about 10 years ago, are we still likely to be able to buy it in the shops? Well, possibly if there are some stocks still around, I have done a quick Google search online and found that you might be able to buy this between 10 and 20 pounds. Um, is it worth that amount of money? Some people would argue that it's vintage and you know people tend to push prices up for that reason alone, but Looking at the kit itself, no, not really. I'd be, you know, it's it's the plastic parts themselves are probably around the five or six pounds, like absolute maximum price that I'd be willing to pay for it. I mean, I was very fortunate that I got this for free. So thanks to my friend for letting me have this one. But at the end of the day, I'm not sure I would buy this kit knowing what was inside for 20 pounds. It's not really worth that amount of money. If you were desperate to have one, then yeah, okay. You know, if you can justify it, that's your choice. But personally, no, I'd probably look at a different uh, Seahawk model kit. And there are some different manufacturers who make a Seahawk in this scale and other scales. So there is a bit of choice out there. But anyway, I think it's probably time to wrap this up on this uh, old vintage kit. It looks to be like it should be quite a fun build. It don't, I don't think it's going to present any real problems. The decals look all right. The instructions seem easy to follow. I mean, they're black and white, but you know, given the age of the kit, that's to be expected. The painting and decal placement instructions on the back seem fairly easy to follow. And given its age, it doesn't look too bad. Granted, it's not the most detailed of kits, but it should be pretty fun. Before I sign off, quick shout out to my patrons over on Patreon and my channel members here on YouTube. A massive thanks to these guys for the support you give my channel. To find out what pledging your support means, take a look at the links in the description. And whilst you're down there, you'll find other links to my social media accounts. If you're new here and you'd like to see more videos like this, make sure you click that subscribe button so you never miss a modeling upload. And if you enjoyed this one, click that like button so that I know that you enjoyed it. Finally, all that's left to say is a massive thank you to you for watching this one, and I will see you on the workbench again next time.